Well, good late evening. Um, had a busy day today. I had to go to the eye doctor for eye injections. I have to have them about every month. And uh, so we went there today, and it's usually it beats you up. When you get done and you get home and you just want to rest and you want to just kick back and sleep. Um, this morning before I left to go to the doctor, I went back and I looked at several of the recent messages. The last, I guess it was the last 18 or 19 messages. And... I went back and looked at the titles of the messages that I have brought forth. Now, I don't know how much scripture I'm going to use, but I wrote down the titles of the messages of the last uh, two and a half weeks. And I'm thinking that, you know, there's been a lot of words that has been said in just the last 15 days that um, the last message that I recorded, is there a great day coming? That was a message that I had brought. Well, that day is coming. There is a great day coming. It's talking about the coming of the Lord. Is God waiting on you? Well, I can say the same thing about me. I'm not saying it just to people that are out there. I'm saying it for as me too. Is God waiting on, on me? Is God waiting on you? Um, does Jesus Christ own you? Does Jesus own you? He owns you if you have been born again. He owns you if you have been saved. The Bible says in one place that ye are not your own anymore, that you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, which are God's. I think that's how the verse goes. I believe we find that over in 1 Corinthians, I believe it is. Has Jesus left you any commandment? Has Jesus left you any commandment? Well, we know the two commandments, to love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, with all our mind, and to love our neighbor as ourself. We know that that is a command. Has Jesus left you any commands? How about the command of being a witness? A commanding of, of genuine love to him. These are all just questions that I spoke on in the last three or four days. I spoke a message on, are you anxious for heaven? I believe that was a song that I had played. Are you anxious? For heaven. You know, I'll be honest with you, I'm anxious. Um, I'd like to be able to go today. But, you know, I have a family and I have a grandson and, you know, I want to spend as much time as I can with them. Am I anxious for heaven? Yeah. I think that we all that are really truly in the Lord that can say with the honesty that, yeah, I'm anxious for it. Do I want it to come tonight? I remember saying the words that I said in that message, you know, I want to be here for my little knucklehead that I call him. I want him to have a papa that knows that that papa loves him and takes care of him when he's here. 
Um, I've made a message on which God is your personal God. Which God is your personal God? So many people say that they know the Lord, they know God, but they make a lot of the rituals and the cares of this life the God. Um, a lot of people make their carnal things of this life their gods that they worship. Are you prepared to leave earth? I remember doing that message. Are you prepared to leave earth? You know, we're going to leave earth one day. Um, either by the way of the rapture or by the way of death in the cemetery. We're going to leave earth. Now, you know, your body can still go back to the earth, but you're going to leave earth. The person that is lost is going to end up in torment. The person who is saved is going to end up in the city of heaven. So, are you ready to leave earth? Are you hearing God's voice? I remember doing a message. Are you hearing the voice of God? You know, God speaks. He speaks through his word. My eyes had injections today, and my head is still woozy-headed from the antibiotic that they put in my in my eye right here. This one here is the one that got the injection, and I have to be careful not to rub it too hard because I don't want it to fester up and to give me a problem. But they stuck a needle into this eye. And see, it's hard for me to read the Word of God, but can I hear the voice of God? Are you hearing God's voice is what I wrote down. You know, there's several more here that I've got. How does Jesus show his love? How does Jesus show his love? He shows his love through what he did when he went to the cross. He went to the cross. He was placed on that cross. He first of all had to carry that cross. He was willing to carry that cross. He was willing to lay his body down on that cross. And just imagine him being willing to take the nails in the two hands and the nail that they put in both of his feet and the raising of the cross in the in the hole that was there to drop that cross in. Think of the crown of thorns that he wore. The mockery, the humiliation, the lack of respect. And yet he was still willing to save one of the thieves that was right beside him before he said, it is finished. He was still willing to show salvation right up till the time that he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head, and he gave up the ghost, and he died. He was still willing to save. How does Jesus show his love? He proved his love. He showed his love. He shows his love today. People that know him and trust in him and learn him. 
Christians, that is true born again Christians, appreciate everything that Jesus did. I'm afraid that many people and that many times that we don't we don't see the value a lot of times. We don't see the value of the Lord a lot of times. Does the Lord God abide in you? That was a message that I made several days ago. Does the Lord God abide in you? Does he live? Does he live in you? It's sort of like putting up a tent. A tent is a portable dwelling. A tent has got a couple of poles in the middle. And it has a couple of tie strings that you tie the the post in different directions to keep the tent up. And a tent is designed to keep the moisture off of you and to give you a little bit of a closed-in area where the varmints and the stuff can't come into the inside of the tent. You zip the tent up so that nothing can come in. But a tent... <clears throat> is basically a portable unit that you can take most anywhere. According to this, does the Lord God abide in you? Wherever it is that you go, does the Lord abide inside your tent? See, your body is simply nothing but a tent. It's a tent that he dwells in if you have invited him in. It's like somebody knocking at the door. They ring the doorbell. You hear the doorbell. You go to the door. You unlock the door. You open the door and you look to see who it is. And if you recognize the person, the first thing that you automatically do is you welcome them to come in to your, to your home. Has a person taken time to welcome the Lord Jesus into their tent of their home? See, this body of mine is only a tent. It's a tent that is here today that could be folded up and put in the ground tomorrow. It's just a tent. Does he abide in you? Does he live in your tent? Some people might go and say, well, Ken, I dare you to say that my body is a tent. A tent is basically something portable. Um, I've got a, a house literally within um, 80 feet of where I'm sitting at right now, but I'm not in the walls of that home. I'm out here. I'm outside. I'm in a place of out here. I'm surrounded by a wall in here, but I'm basically in a tent that could be here today and gone tomorrow. Here's another ver uh, message. Are you washed, sanctified, and justified? Well, if a person is washed in the Jesus Christ then there's a certain amount of sanctification that comes because we are born of the Spirit of God. He abides in us. We are washed through Jesus' blood. And yes, we are sanctified to the point that God has set us aside for a certain duty, a certain ministry that nobody can do my ministry and I can't do somebody else's ministry. I can only be me. I can't be somebody else. I'm not very smart. I'm smart enough to know that I needed the Lord inside me. 
There's many people that feel that they have the Lord inside them, but then do they feel that they are sanctified? That word sanctified, like I said then, I'll say it to you today. That word sanctified means that something has been put away. I used my little, my little stamper the other night when I made that message. But you know what? My ink is on the floor. I don't have a lot out here to go under the f- table to find the little ink cartridge because it fell on the floor. I know where it is, but I, I don't have light to go in there and see it. See, my ink cartridge is there waiting to, for me to be able to retrieve it to put it back together where I can be able to use it for what it was designed for. That's what sanctification is. Being set apart for a special use that God wants to use it for. And then it only says and justified. Justified it in the eyes of God actually means that God justifies you like you are innocent that you have never sinned a day in your life. Now, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. We all have sinned. Uh, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 that God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet in sin, Christ died for us. So we are a sinner. But that word justified in the way that God looks at it is that when a person is washed, they're, they're sanctified, and because they're sanctified, they're justified, meaning that word justification means that it's like God sees us as never sinning a day in our life after we come to know the washing of Jesus Christ. See, it ain't us, it's the washing of Jesus Christ that makes us sanctified, that makes us justified. Are you hearing God talking to you? Are you hearing God talking to you? Do you realize that when I get done with this message right here, that I could go and find another 18 or 20 messages with question marks that I could actually make another message on another group of messages. These are just titles of the messages that I have delivered in the last 18 days. Are you hearing God talking to you? You should hear him through his word. But many people only want to use his word based on what they have already been taught and what they already know. They're not looking at it that, Lord, what is it that you are really saying? What is it that you are really telling me? What is it that there's things that when I read a particular verse that I didn't see before? See, if you ever lock yourself down into a file cabinet of a certain size file cabinet, you will never grow beyond the file cabinet because the file cabinet will limit you and limit your movement and limit your knowledge. But when you open yourself up to the Lord, you're no longer in that file cabinet that you open yourself up to the Lord, that the Lord can teach you things that say you didn't know. Here's another message. Will you be found in God's future plans? Well, I can answer that one probably not like I did on the message, but yes, you will be found in God's future plan. But God's plan for your life is to be where he is. 
See, take God as being over here where I'm pointing. But God's future plan also is pointing the other way. If a person doesn't know the Lord, then God's finger is pointing in this direction. God wants you over here on this side. But if we choose not to believe this side, then God's plan is to put you on the other side. So the question was, will you be found in God's future plans? I say yes, because either you know him or you don't know him. If you know him, then you can be on the side of blessing in God's future plan. If you don't know him, you're going to be on God's judgment plan. And it's really left up to us. Here's another message. How much do you love God? How much do you love God? Now, there's a message on line, like I say, in the last 18 messages that you'll find a message. How much do you love God? There's a lot of people that love him as long as that, you know, I get what I want. As long as that I get my toys and get my stuff, then I love God. But how much do you really love God? Remember, I think it was the Lord. I believe he asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Yea, Lord, you know I love you. Then he asked him again, Peter, do you love me? Yea, Lord. He got started to get a little bit concerned. And then the Lord said, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. He even got bent out of shape at Jesus. Lord, you know I love you. No, I think the Lord saw that Peter did love him. But there was some things that the Lord was trying to let Peter see. Could that be what's going on even today, even in our life? Are you upside down or right side up? How many people is upside down rather than being right side up? I figured I'd probably end up getting a little flack for that message. Are you living in light or darkness? Are you living in light or darkness? There was a many a year I lived in darkness. I had the darkness of religion. Are you worshiping flesh or are you worshiping spirit? Which one are you worshiping? Many times we want to worship flesh. It's just more fun. But God says to worship me in spirit and in truth. That's what the Lord says. Here's number 18. What fruit are you shaking loose? What fruit are you shaking loose? You know, I remember using the orange tree that the machine would go and put the forks around the tree and it would vibrate the tree and it would vibrate the, the fruit off. If I'm not bad and mistaken, that was a message I got several views on that message. But you know, I wrote one down here that I haven't done yet that I'm planning on to doing it. If I haven't already done it tonight, what's your focus? What's your focus? My focus for the last 18 messages with all, was all these messages that I wrote down on two sides of the paper. 
this has been my focus. What's, what's your focus? Who are you telling about the goodness of God? Something to think about. Something to meditate on. When we might even do this again one day, I don't know. But my focus is to try to bring someone into the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. I hope that you got something from this. This is just a reminder of how good God is, that God reminds us of his goodness and mercy and love. Elderly Ministry is the website. You can go online and you can look me up. You can also go on YouTube. This is a YouTube channel. You can go on YouTube. Leave a message when you call, and I'll return your call. I appreciate you watching today. I thank y'all for being out here with me.